Hi, I'm E.D. Lewis, and welcome back to my channel. E.D. Lewis Reviews back with an all-new uh, Pride Month review. Before we get start, before we get started, make sure you hit that like and that subscribe button down below, along with that little bell, so you'll get notifications on my latest videos. And um, yeah, also leave a comment. I don't want to forget about that because I do like reading comments when they come through. So please uh, do leave a comment. All right, so this is uh, continuing Pride Month with our second Pride Month review. We're only doing, I think, two, unless an emergency one pops up at some point during this month, because I'm filming these ahead of time, and I just don't know that one is going to pop up. I mean, you know, this is what we got so far. So, okay. Um, so this one is a book that came out around nine years ago. I think the other one was about ten years ago, the... Uh, the uh, Wyborn and Griffin book called Threshold. This one is a different series by a different author, but it actually came recommended. Um, it was like a part of like recommendations when I started reading the Wyborn and Griffin series. And so I eventually got um, this book and then I waited a while before reading it till this year actually. And um, yeah, so let's get started with it. Um, the book is called uh, The Magpied Lord by K.J. Charles. It is the first book in the Charm of Magpies trilogy, though there are a series of short stories, and there are books that also are not part of the series but take place in the same universe as this. I would call this book, it's not horror, it's more like light horror. I'm going to include it on um, Horror Tube, though, so that's why it's going to say Horror Tube in the title, um, because there is some light horror to it. But uh, we'll we'll uh, get into that unless I forget. <laughs> so um, it was published in 2013. It is a gothic romance, but it, and it's also uh, MM romance and LGBTQ uh, literature. It is um, Lucien Vaudry, who is the new Lord Crane, was sent away to China, exiled there by his father for 20 years. Now that his father and his brother um, have mysteriously died, he returns home and finds that he has not only inherited the title, he's also inherited some other things. He starts having some strange, uh, things happen to him. He nearly commits suicide two times without understanding why, without even realizing he's doing it till he, you know, is being stopped by his manservant, um, whose name just now escaped me. Merrick. His name is Merrick, sorry, uh, Mr. Merrick. So they end up calling in, looking for a British shaman, and they find one, a, and he's called, oh, what is the term they use? Um, mm, I cannot remember what it's called off the top of my head. Shoot. Well, if I remember, it'll pop up you know, somewhere on the screen. Um, he is basically a magician. He, uh, kind of like, you know, he's a magician or a witch. He's not a warlock, because we do find out about warlocks in this, uh, the universe of this, so, um, which, uh, the history of the word warlock is interesting. That's, uh, something for a different time. But, um, sorry, I almost thought I remembered that word. Oh, well, it'll pop up on the screen, like I said. Um, so they call in uh, this magician to try and solve the problem, and um, this leads to a whole mystery of who is trying to kill, who, one, killed his brother and his father, and also who's trying to kill him as well. Now, the magician's name is Stephen Day, and um, he's kind of this short, skinny, lanky guy who uh, eats a lot of food, and due to you know using all the magic that he uses, he burns up a lot of calories and has to eat quite a bit, kind of like the Flash in many ways. Um, so they both get entangled in this uh, mystery and stuff, and they find soon that they have quite an attraction for one another. And of course, it leads to some pretty spicy bits in the book. Um, there are some really horrific scenes. There's one scene in this uh, book that kind of remind me of a scene from The Ring, um, and it involves hair. And that's all I'm going to say about that. But it was really disturbing or frightening. There's even some funny moments, especially with that. I do believe there was a funny moment in that scene. Some of the 
things that Lucien Baudry, Lord Crane, says that are absolutely hilarious. Like, some of his creative ways of cussing just almost uh, made me fall out of my chair on the floor, uh, you know, the times that I was sitting. Um, and then there was another uh, instance that reminded me of another movie, and it's later in the book, and it reminded me of another book, too. Um, the scene that, uh, without telling you what it is, it was reminiscent of, if you've seen the movie, uh, the Dark Half, based off the Stephen King novel, which I have not read the novel. There's a, a particular scene in that movie, and it also reminded me of a scene in a book I've already uh, reviewed, uh, I think it was last year. Yes, it was last year, uh, Craven Manor by Darcy Coates. That remind me, both both those uh, scenes in those books remind me of The Dark Half, and of course this one made me also think of uh, Craven Manor. So, um, yeah... It, it's an interesting book, and there are definitely some horrific, disturbing scenes and a lot of humor to it, and there's definitely some spicy moments. A majority of the spicy moments happen at the end of the book, especially with the little interlude thing, and there's this cool little uh, section at the end having to do with that uh, major spicy moment. So this one obviously touches upon some different subjects, including uh, suicide, um, and, um, also family ties and family relations as well. And I feel like it even gets in a little bit of domestic things because some of the, the ways that Lucian is portrayed in his, uh, we'll say lover's mode are not exactly desirable unless you're into that type of thing. Because I could see someone getting really offended by it and even kind of made me kind of like, well, that's a little concerning. But then again, you know, who knows? So I guess it's uh, open to interpretation, but I found it potentially alarming. But, you know, it's up to the individual. I gave this book, uh, I do believe, four stars. Um, it was a fun book. I would like to read more in the series. I just don't know when I'm going to get around to it because me and series are terrible. Um, so, yeah. But anyway, uh, do check out a, um, The Magpie Lord, uh, book one of A Charm of Magpies by K.J. Charles. It is an excellent book. Uh, I didn't like it as much, though, as I do the Wyborn and Griffin series, because that one, I think, is much more adventure and stuff, and almost a little pulpy in many ways. But um, it's all, it is a fine book, and uh, if you're definitely looking for a little bit of smutty romance, there is a little bit in there, so do check that out. And I hope everybody's having a great Pride Month, and I'll see you all soon with another review uh, very soon. So uh, happy Pride, and have a safe month, and uh, stay spooky, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.